Good evening and welcome. So glad you could join me today. Uh, we're looking at uh, the week basically ending on the 23rd of June, 2023. And this is the crypto section for the ASX Traders United Facebook page. Now you can probably see, hey, this is a little bit different. Um, so normally we actually have a little notepad on the left-hand side of the um, page. I've been introducing that over the last few weeks. And I thought, you know what? Let's do this all graphically instead. We'll put everything up on the charts in terms of all of the um, support and resistance lines, the areas of uh, interest, all of those kind of things instead, make it a lot easier to deal with. And at least that way everything's up and so simple to be able to take a look at, really, really easy, makes it a lot quicker. And you, know, you can just basically just see it all visually rather than having to worry about flipping across and looking at, looking at um, the notepad, then looking back at looking back at the chart, and it's a lot easier overall. So now I'm using Trading View in terms of this, which is a lot more simple, cleaner, and as I'm sure you'll take a look at overall there, it will actually make the analysis a lot easier to be able to follow as I'm actually discussing things too. So I'll flip off my camera so you can actually see all of the chart in its full glory. And what a week it really has been in terms of crypto land. I'm sure you'll agree. Um, so yes, we were talking last week being essentially Sunday. So that was where this particular area was here, right at the base of what this, all of a sudden there's this, there's this green rectangle that I've got here, um, which, well, when you take a look at where, where we were trading around about that point, we were looking about the low 26,000 mark at that stage and i was saying at that point for bitcoin the point of interest for all the traders right back there was 26,613. well lo and behold the next day what happened you can really see what happened um, i'm just going to for now just show the chart directly don't worry about the indicators just look at the chart you can look at indicators later on but looking at the chart itself that's what happened. Pretty much the next day. Wow. Okay. It went and it went off. It really did. And it just kept on shooting off and kept on shooting off and kept on shooting off. So there was just a lot of action that was going on. And all of these lines I've just basically taken across from all the previous notes and replicated across onto the chart now. So you can really see that it just broke through that, that resistance line there broke through, it tested the support um, resistance line there, now forming support with that, broke through this resistance area, broke through that resistance area, and it just kept on going and going and going until it's basically now met. Now, I didn't have this resistance line on here. And you might be thinking, hang on, you did not have that on there, Steve. Where's that popped up from? Okay, no worries. Let's have a look at that. So we're looking at this area here of 31,349. Now, very, very simple. And this is what I really, really do like about TradingView. TradingView allows you to basically just shrink the chart down and then be able to see former support and resistance areas or former opening areas, closing areas, all of those kind of things there with the greatest of ease. So all you're gonna do is basically just enlarge the areas there and you can add Resistance areas, support areas, all those kind of things there without a problem. Now, as you can see, I just simply drew a line on that particular bar right there where the open was, 31,349. Simple. Same thing with that particular bar there, 31,784. Now, if you're wondering where all of these numbers are coming from, look at the top. That's where the open is, 31,784 on that particular bar. And on that, on that bar there, 31,349. Okay? Once again never making any of this stuff up. Everything's on the charts. No matter which chart you use, they're all going to have their own little idiosyncrasies and all of those kind of things there. But if you're using the same chart for consistency, it doesn't matter. The main thing is, as long as you're using the same chart and then you use the same values on that chart, and you can always just translate whatever dates and all those kind of things there and then just use the same methodology and then just use the same thought process and apply it to each different chart that you use, bang, you've got the same way of being able to put in support resistance lines. And that's all I've done today. So I'm a little bit late today, I must admit, no problem. I've just been putting everything onto these charts to be able to have them ready for you 
during this presentation. So that's where the lines are at 31, and uh, well, the numbers 31, 3, 4, 9, and 31, 7, 8, 4 have come from. Okay. Now, isn't it fascinating? Now, I'll just bring this all back. Isn't it fascinating how Bitcoin tested that 31? We'll just say 31340, just for simplicity. It tests that area and then it just bounced right back off it. Okay. And now it's sitting in between those two zones. Okay. So that's where Bitcoin is currently sitting right now. Now you might be wondering what is this what is this green rectangle area? Now, last week I basically mentioned with Bitcoin that the point of interest of area was the 26613. Now, it broke that area, broke right into that point of area of interest, and then just shot right through, shot right off. Okay, that was the activation point. Go back to, go back to last week's notes if you want to. Go back to the presentation and, and have a look. If you don't believe me, and then you actually see what's going on. And that is pretty much it there. Now, this week, things have changed. Okay, that point of interest in terms of traders themselves has now changed to 28,097, okay? That is now our support area before the traders get interested in terms of the sell side, okay? So that's what happens there. Now, we might be saying, okay, well, why have I drawn in this green rectangle? Well, that's where it starts. And it's based on this candle right here. Okay, so 28.079, that's the closest in terms of the 28.097 support level. Okay, so 28.070 from the 29th of May. Now I've drawn the full green rectangle all the way down to about this support area here. Now if that support area breaks, consider this a safe zone more than anything else really. That's the way I like to think of it there. But if it breaches into this area here, and you're holding Bitcoin or you're feeling as though, oh, I'm still bullish kind of thing there. This is an area where you're probably thinking, mm, okay, maybe my inclination towards it would probably be changing at this point. That would probably be the best way of thinking because the traders themselves are going to start getting very, very interested around this area. Okay, and that's what I basically mean by that. So just the way like we were thinking previously, right? When we were down here, and once it gets into 26.613, the traders would be interested. What happened as soon as we got into this area? Traders were very interested and they went woof and shot it right through. Same kind of thing can happen if we're starting to trade around about here. It breaches into this zone, traders get interested, and then all of a sudden, whoosh, to the downside. That's basically it. So it's a matter of setting yourself up, getting yourself ready just in case the traders do get interested and things totally go to the other side. That's essentially what the circumstances are in terms of Bitcoin. Now, the real mover. Now, this is something that if you are not believing in technical analysis whatsoever, I really encourage you go back to last week because I did say this extremely clearly in terms of Bitcoin Cash. Now, look at that. This is a work of art. It really is what has actually happened here in terms of Bitcoin Cash. Now, last week with Bitcoin Cash, I mentioned $114.40 is going to be the area of point of interest in terms of traders being interested in the market. Now, I'm going to highlight where 114.40 is. Right there. Huh? Look at that. And what happened after it got there? Now, you can zoom in if you really, really want to. Oh, it looks good. You know what? Let's do it. <laughs> Just for real, real giggles. Okay. Let us zoom in really, really close because you're really going to see what happened. Do, 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 do. Once again, showing you the real power of this particular 
platform. Okay, now let us zoom right into this area because you're going to see exactly what happened to Bitcoin Cash. Now, can you imagine if you had a limit order just sitting there, ready to go, and bang, right at that point. Now, what was I saying? $114.40. Right. There you go, $114.40. I'm just going to highlight that for you, $114.40. There you go, $114.40. Now, you don't believe that that's an area of interest the traders were getting into. Look at that volume, right? That's exactly it. Now, this is the power of technical analysis, everyone. Okay? Seriously. That is the power of technical analysis. Now you take a look at all of these support areas, former resistance areas, as soon as it bounced up into that area, came back, tested, tested that former resistance area and respected the former resistance area. Now support, this is all resistance and support. This is all there is to it, okay? Simple as that. This is all support and resistance. And it shows you in terms of cryptocurrencies in particular, how well they respect support and resistance. It is as simple as that. Respected the support, bounced right off it, muddled around with all of these other resistance levels here, finally broke through it, came back down, tested all those areas. Yep, 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 yep. Okay, mucked around with it a little bit more mucked around with it a little bit more and look what it's just done right after that and all of that test in there look at all that look at all this volume okay now you're probably wondering what is this green what is that green rectangle there as well well look at that that is now going to be another support area for you if you own bitcoin cash okay it is as simple as that now let's scroll back outwards why is that an important support level? By the way, if you do own if you do own Bitcoin Cash and you manage to get in at $114, congratulations to you. You now own it at $201. Oh, what is that as a return on your investment? $201.72 current price divided by $114 and 40 if you got in at that price. 76% return. Congratulations is all I can say. That's an amazing return for what was it? Oh, a couple of days. Incredible. Okay, congratulations. Absolutely fantastic. You deserve an amazing pat on the back. Okay. But now have a look in terms of, okay, we'll go back to the daily chart on that. But congratulations if you're in. Um, absolutely spectacular return on investment there. But you're probably looking and saying, okay, well, where has this support and resistance and everything like that come from? It's simply here, okay? This area here, which I just broke through there and actually blasted through the $145 area, which, which was that beginning of that green rectangle, is right there, okay? That is a former resistance area, $145.29. Now, this is a perfect, 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 perfect example of support and resistance. I might actually make a video on this. That's how really, really good the support and resistance area is on this in relation to Bitcoin Cash. Incredible. But it really shows how cryptocurrencies respond so well in relation to technical analysis. Simple as that. Okay. Now, you might also be looking at, okay, what the story is here in terms of these dates that I've got here. Now, overall, these dates here, a former, 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 former resistance areas, okay? And now I'm going to enlarge that for you so you can see it too. That here, 29th of July, okay? 155.88. So that's one. All right? So that's one major support level. And you might be wondering why is that in particular importance? 
Well, that is the new point of interest. So like I was just saying with Bitcoin a few moments ago, in terms of a point of interest of traders getting interested in terms of potentially to the downside again, it gets to that area there, that might be where everyone really, really gets excited and goes, Whoosh, right? But in the meantime, we actually have right now from the 1st of June, okay, this blue line right here. And it's actually just closing beneath it right now as we speak, right? We could have some short-term resistance at this point right now. So if you do own Bitcoin, cash, this could be an area where you might be thinking and saying to yourself, hmm, maybe it might not load a little, okay? Because at this stage right now, back on the 1st of June of 2022, right? 1st of June, 2022, Bitcoin Cash had a red candle right there with the open of 23, 231.60. 231.60, keep that one, keep that number in mind. 231.60, 231.60 is this blue line right up there. So it hasn't reached that. And if we go back to 1st of June in particular, this is a lot of garbage back there on the left-hand side. 1st of June, $204.55. Two hundred and four fifty-five. Two hundred and four fifty-five. Two hundred and four fifty-five is this blue line right here. Now it's closing just beneath that right now. It's trading beneath it right now. Two hundred and one eighty. So it's Bitcoin Cash. Okay. Ethereum. Ethereum's messier. Okay, but it hasn't performed too badly either. Now Ethereum's last week point of interest area. Was 100, was, sorry, not 100, <laughs> 1778. As soon as it got into 1778, people started seeing some interest into it. Didn't last all that long, came back down, tested back around that area again, and then it shot off. So a little bit weaker compared to what happened with Bitcoin Cash and Bitcoin. But it got there in the end. It shot off and did very, very well. And it's, it's really had to struggle through a lot of other res resistance points along the way and still really, really struggling to get past this resistance. This resistance area up here formed way, way back here in the beginning of April, okay? So it's got a lot to contend with. Gets past this area though, and we could be really testing former resistance areas up here as well as back from 2022. Don't forget the resistance points from 2022. That's why you're seeing these lines going all the way back, okay? Because if we, we roll back out, we'll see where those lines begin, right? Back in 2022. We've been talking about that in the past few videos. 2022 in May in particular, and there's a couple there even in August. All of these are coming back from those areas, and they're coming back into the forefront right now. So see how Ethereum reacts with that. But it's got a reasonable amount of support all the way through here, all of this too. But the points of interest have remained the same this week in terms of Ethereum. So Ethereum still stays stable with 1778 being the major point of interest overall. The potential downside move should it reach around that area there. The traders may get interested in that area again. They're thinking, oh, it's going to fail. And then it might shoot downwards from there, if that's the case. Litecoin. Okay, now Litecoin has got a lot of resistance areas above. You can see that all from all the lines. As you can see, I've been extremely busy today putting all these lights <laughs> in on the charts. But last week, it was $85.44 being the area of interest for traders. $85.44. And as soon as it got up to $85.44, off she went. But okay, yeah, it wasn't, I suppose, as great as what we've seen with all the other coins overall. But it's done all right, okay? It's done okay. It's just got a lot to contend with. That's the big thing. But notice where that red candle was hit. It's hit a former resistance point. Okay, that resistance point was from back here in March. Hit that former resistance point, and it's essentially bounced, snap right back from it straight away. Simple as that. So where to from here? Well, it could bounce around here for a while, aim to retest it perhaps, maybe get through a few more, or it could potentially even come right back down. Now, this green support area here 
is not the 85.44 I was mentioning last week. It's now $84.31 where it starts from, okay? And that is essentially in alignment with previous support level here on the 20th of January, okay? So that's where it all starts from there. Now, if it all comes back down through here, we could potentially see some weakness and go straight through there should the traders and investors get a little bit antsy and get interested in that point there. How are we looking with the other cryptocurrencies? Well, a couple of others are now in play if you were not too sure about it. First of which has been Dogecoin. Now, Dogecoin, level of interest for Dogecoin was actually 0 0.06502. And it got up there. Uh, people snuffed it out. Then it came back up again and was starting to get back interesting. And then it's just basically just gone a little bit sideways since then. Now, I haven't drawn any support and resistance lines on this as yet because it really hasn't established itself. And it's just like, yeah, okay, whatever. It's in play. It's not really going all that crazy and everything on those lines there, but it seems to be moving along. Let's just watch this for now. If it decides to take a bit of a move and everything like that, I'll add some support and resistance onto it and we'll work it out from there and we'll see how it goes. The other one is Polkadot. Now, Polkadot looks as though it's actually going to take off a lot better than what Dogecoin's done. It actually has actually moved on and it's actually moving along quite now, quite along nicely now. It's actually in today, in play today as we actually are speaking and really, really moving along by the looks of it. Now, whether this will continue on into the momentum play, We'll wait and see, but it seems to be going okay. The level of interest was four dollars eighty-eight seven, or four point eight eight seven, really, and that was established from the low of that particular day here on the fifth of June. Now we'll just wait and see on this one here. I'll put in support and resistance lines once it establishes itself a little bit further on, but it looks as though it's going okay so far. So so far so good. We'll wait and see, um, and we'll work it out from there. The other two from the majors, in terms of um, uh, what are these ones here again? Uh, Cardano, level of interest before anyone will really, really arc up anything. 0 0.3082 in terms of Cardano, hasn't reached it yet, as you can see. Now I've put the level of, the level of support area basically where the open of that particular candle is here. Because uh, there's really nothing beneath that. And Solana, as we've been talking about over the last few weeks, which has literally just been really ugly. Uh, level of interest there is the top of the week, really more than anything else on that one. And because the level of interest at this point in time is $17.77. And whether it will reach above that, we'll wait and see. But should it reach above that, this has a power to really potentially explode when you think about it, because there's a lot of you know, energy building up in this one. Um, and that could potentially shoot to the upside. Maybe we'll wait and see in the grand scheme of things. But that is essentially now the crypto breakdown, um, which I'm sure you'll agree is a lot clearer um, in terms of support and resistances. And you can really take a look at that even throughout the week as it's actually moving along and then really be able to clearly see where everything is coming from as well. Um, in terms of updating it through the week even for yourself uh, to, to hopefully help you out with uh, any of your trading in terms of being able to see where those support businesses lie in relation to your own positions there too. Now, obviously not financial advice. I always say that. There's no doubt about that at all. I have to say that anyway too um, in order to be made compliant. See the disclaimer at the end. But at the same time, it's just one of those things that I like to keep track of even for myself as well too. But it's just one of those things where you can basically say very, very quickly, looking at it there, where are things positioning and how does it relate to any positions that you may actually own for yourself? Or if you're interested in looking at something, do you, do you wish to take the long position or the short position in relation to that as well too? You can very, very quickly and easily glance at that and see what are the obstacles ahead or what are the support levels behind you in relation to what you're seeing for your trading. But I hope it does help. Uh, feel free to um, come across ASIC Traders United and uh, be able to join in with the discussion as well. Uh, links are down below uh, in relation to joining in and uh, getting involved with the discussion. It is becoming very, very lively in relation to all of this as well now too. And um, look forward to seeing you over there. 
If you're also interested, involved in, interested in taking a look at what's going on in the Aussie markets as well as the uh, US markets, there is also our other video in relation to that as well too. Feel free to take a look at that too. And um, thank you very much for sharing some time with me this weekend. Other than that, I'll catch up with you again next week and over at the ASX Traders United Facebook page. Catch up with you soon. Bye for now.